Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about debugging a C++ code base with Visual Studio Code. Let's be honest, right? As developers, we spend most of our time debugging the code we have written or some code we have inherited. And most of the times it's really painful, right? And you can go about adding print statements, std couts everywhere. But that, that doesn't scale well, right? You have to rebuild the program. You have to sprinkle it at first point of interest, then second point of interest, rebuild the whole thing. It takes time. And at the other end, you can use GDB, LLDB. But if you're like me, you are probably not very big fan of command line text based interface so to so to give you a reference if you have used visual studio on windows or the python debugger which ships with visual studio codes python extension that's that's what i'm looking for right and that's what we'll try to recreate today and uh, to go about that i have this sample project wherein we take a bunch of arrays and apply some operation on them and it could be either an AVX2 compiled operation or a CPU or a plain old base, it, a base x86 operation, right? And at runtime, we decide like if the CPU supports AVX instructions, then dispatch to this AVX compiled function. Otherwise, just dispatch to the plain old x86 version, right? And uh, to get uh, started with debugging, we'll first ask CMake to configure the files project for us and we explicitly add the cmake build type equals debug right and as most of us know like we have to tell the compiler that we want to debug with this binary so please keep the extra information because otherwise this since this inform extra information bloats the binary size compiler by default does not add this extra information so you, that's why you have to explicitly specify that and i'll show you if you try to debug a release binary or the binary which does not have this information what will happen at the end of the video so since we have the con like the build project files ready let's just build the project and uh, since it's a small project it's already built and we have this file called test bin which actually corresponds to this file so to tell visual studio code as to how we are going to debug it we need to configure one file called launch.json and the extra most of the details which are needed are specified in this link which we'll share in the description which uh, also talks about the features and some things you might have to specify and some known limitations uh, so let's just look at the configuration that we have done first is the name which corresponds to this uh, this one and the type is c plus plus debug the request is to launch and what we mean is to launch this program this binary with the specified debugger which in this case is gdb and i had to specify the path to my gdb because my environment is slightly messed up and there's also this stop at entry which i'll talk about once we start debugging the program right so since we have everything ready let's get debugging right so you can start debugging by clicking this symbol or pressing f5 so there you go and this is what the stop at entry corresponds to is uh, Please put a breakpoint for me once you just enter the main, right? And this is helpful if you have a small program and before you add a breakpoint, the program just finishes. So that's why it, it could be helpful. And let's look at the debug window and what all it has for us. So first is variables and it has this to locals and registers. The locals corresponds to the local variables in the current scope. So we have op dispatcher, CPU dispatcher, X, Y. And if we see X, it's uninitialized at this point and has garbage value and same for Y. And for registers, these are the either the x86 base registers, RAX, RBX, FPU registers, SSC registers, AVX registers based on what's available. So that's what it has. Watch is to watch some variables or some expression which uh, so uh, imagine you are uh, iterating over a loop or constantly calling a function and you want to keep track of few state variables particularly in that loop right so instead of hovering over that you can just add them to the watch expression and look look for the values that they correspond to right and then there's call stack which i'll show you once we actually make a function call so let's get to this breakpoint and to do that i'll just 
continued till here and as you can see now the well x and y's are initialized x is 4 3 2 1 y should be 3 0 1 0 yeah and let's step into this function call to see what's actually happening to step into it you can either press f1 or click this symbol and as you can see the main thing that this function does is it sees whether the current cpu has avx support and if we have explicitly asked to use the base x86 instructions right so in since in this case we haven't actually asked it should dispatch to avx and th this is what it does right it goes to the if branch it takes the if which actually dispatches to the avx function so that is correct and as you can see now we have this call stack there and if you click on main you can see like right this is where the call was and if you click here you'll see the locals is updated to the current scope so what was the state when you actually made the call and if you click here again this gets updated again the scope changes the variables change and you can also see the watch variables are now actually it says avx support is true and not use cpu so we haven't actually asked to use the cpu so that's why i took this branch right so let's go to the next breakpoint and in this case we have explicitly asked it to use cpu so we should take the cpu or the base x86 branch and let's see if that's what happens and as you can see we have taken this branch and this is because this has remained true because my processor of course hasn't changed and since we specified the flag this turns to false and we take this branch now right and uh, like i said i'll tell you what happens if you uh, don't build your binary with debug information and let me just do that so yeah and uh, let's build the binary in release mode and since cmake defaults to release mode all you have to do is cmake dot dot and uh, let's wait for a second and there you go i'll just build it again and this time the binary we have is in release mode so let's try to debug it we have the config file and everything ready all we have to do is click here and if you can see it has stopped somewhere and if you can see the breakpoints have grayed out we can't add anything and it sees module containing this breakpoint has not loaded or the breakpoint address could not be opened this is because there is no information in the binary as to which symbols map to which file or stuff like that right so and if you click now it will just go ahead and finish what it does so that's 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 what i wanted to talk today uh, hope you under uh, hope you find this useful and uh, thank you very much so if you like the video please hit the like button and if you are interested in more such content please hit subscribe and that's it that's it for